For it's at that name that every knee must bow and that every single knee shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We're not waiting to be forced to do it. We have already done it. We call you Lord. We call you Master. What a thrill it is. Glory to God. Because you don't lord it over the way earthly men do. You are a God who loves with a great sacrificial and generous love. And we have been so blessed by coming into relationship with you, Jesus. And now, Father, as we approach the ministry of your word, we come hungry this morning. Hungry to know how to live and what to do. How to walk in your will and walk in your way. We ask God today that you would give me utterance as the minister. That God, that my words would be your words. That God, that you would cause them to be spirit and life. Faith creating words. We thank you, Father God, for this. That we're going to walk away different. We're going to walk away nourished. We're going to walk away blessed. We thank you, Father, for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 We're going to dive into this today. Be judicious with our time. And yet uh, get some things over to you, we trust, Amen. that's going to enlighten you and help you and bless you. Amen. We just prayed. We got in faith about it, didn't we? Yes. And uh, praise God. I'd like for you to turn this morning to the book of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Amen. And then from there, we'll be going to Mark chapter 4, I believe. I'm not turning to 3 John 2, but I've got it in mind. We're on the same subject that we have been for the last two or three weeks now. Talking about total prosperity. Total prosperity. I don't know about you, but in the face and despite all that I see going on around me, uh, praise God, I, I'm going over Amen. and not under. Amen. I'm coming into more. In fact, I'm being brought into more. Yeah. And so are you. Isn't that right? Uh, with God, I can't find God relating, you know, himself being the source of subtraction or division. And God doesn't like, he doesn't like division for sure. Amen. Amen. And uh, he doesn't like things being subtracted. He talks about adding. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all these things the Gentiles are so worked up about and preoccupied with. He'll add them to you. Add them to you. Praise God. He told Adam in the garden, he said, be fruitful and multiply. Multiply. So God is into addition and multiplication, not subtraction. Amen. Well, you say, well, the, you know, it's just bad out there. It's bad for the world. It's bad in the world. You say, well, I'm in the world. Yeah, but you're not of it. And our lives are to be governed by an entirely different kingdom. Praise God. We have a king. Amen. His name is Jesus. He's on the throne. A king has a kingdom. Amen. Uh, that dominion has borders. Right? There's a domain. And when we got born again, we were made citizens of his kingdom. In fact, we're not just low level people in that kingdom either. Because the Bible calls us kings and priests unto God. He is called the King of kings and the Lord of lords. <laughs> Hallelujah. So amen, you'd be biblical and right in your thinking and in your speaking to say, I'm done with low level living. I'm done with low level living. I'm done with low level eating, low level dressing, low level speaking. Amen. I'm done with low-level driving. Yes. 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 <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm done with lack. Uh -huh. The Lord is my shepherd. Yes. Hallelujah. Did the Lord say, the Lord is my shepherd, and I am emaciated and hurting? No. 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 The Bible talked about how abundant, David talked about how abundant the shepherd had been. That since David had started following the Lord, that he'd been walking beside still waters, yes. lying down in green pastures, yes. feasting at a table right in the presence of his enemies, yes. walking through valleys, sure, but with the Lord right by his side, comforted by his rod and staff. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. Amen. Anybody in here going over? We're going over in life. Yeah, not because we're something great, but because he's something really, really great. Praise God. And uh, so we're talking about prosperity in total. Prosperity is not a dollar amount. Prosperity is a, uh, it's a condition. A condition of mind. It's a legal condition. It's a moral condition. It's a mental condition. And it shows up. Prosperity will produce all sorts of fruits. Fruit in the mind, fruit in the body, fruit in our relationships, fruit in ministry, fruit in career, fruit in every endeavor. Hallelujah. Fruit in prayer. Prayer fruit. Praise God. And uh, so God wants us to prosper in every arena. If you question that, you know, you could get the CDs that came before. We don't have time to go back and talk about that. So uh, today I want to talk to you about and teach you a little bit on the law of sowing and reaping. Yeah. Amen. The law of sowing and reaping. You're not about to get sad, are you? No. Praise God. Amen. Amen. The law of sowing and reaping. It's a law that ought, ought, uh, you know, is, ought to make you really glad. Amen. You know, it had to be God that uh, talked about how, you know, uh, you could have one and turn one into many. You know, you take one penny, and every day you double a penny, and in 30 days, you've got a million dollars. If you take one penny and you double, right? One penny becomes two penny, two pennies become four. Four becomes eight, and eight becomes 16, right? You just keep doing that in 30 days, you've got a million dollars. What a system. Right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. So anyway, uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 2, I want to just introduce this. I'm just going to just be as speedy as I can, so keep up with me. Uh, Romans 8, verse 2, notice what Paul said. He said, for the law. Everyone say the law. The law. So there are laws. You say, well, I'm under grace. I'm done with law. You better not be done with law. You're not under the law of Moses. Amen. But do you know the God that wrote, had Moses write, write uh, the law? That God has not changed. Right. It's not like God's changed his mind and now adultery's okay. That now it's okay to covet another man's wife. You understand that? God's not changed. He still looks down on stealing and lying, and cheating and idolatry and all those things. Amen. Praise God. It's just our approach to God is a better approach now. We come by way of blood and by faith, the blood of Jesus and faith in what he's done for us, not by keeping law, but the law that was written was good. Amen. And uh, there is law today, laws that govern things. Amen. And uh, praise God. We need to understand these laws and come into agreement with them and learn to work these laws, both natural and spiritual, to our advantage and benefit. Instead of coming up against them, amen, and banging our head against the wall. Now, what I'm teaching you today is one specific part of how the kingdom of God operates. It's not, uh, it doesn't have anything to do just wholly to the exclusion of other things with finances. But it includes finances, and we'll show you that. That God has assigned seed power to money. It's very biblical. Amen. And, uh, uh, but I want you to understand here, uh, before I even get into this this morning, that uh, uh, giving money away and getting money back is not the only way to prosper. Right. It's not all that goes into prosper, uh, prospering financially. Amen. Because uh, you can give money, bring your tithes even, and then give offerings. Uh, but if you're not right... It's not going to work for you. That's right. Amen. I mean, if your words are wrong and your motives are wrong and your character's bad and you live out of the will of God, all of this matters. Amen. 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 So I don't want you, this is what I'm giving you. And any sermon is a part of the part of the whole big thing. Yeah. Amen. But this is a legitimate law. 
And I would say this, you'll, you'll see here momentarily, that it is a, what we would call a major governing law in the kingdom. The law of sowing and reaping. In fact, the entire kingdom of God operates by that principle. Amen. Sow a seed, nurture it for a time. Amen. It's a governing principle in the kingdom of God. And uh, you could wish it weren't so. Act as if it wasn't so. Pray it wouldn't be so. But it's so. And you might as well get it to work for you instead of against you. (laughs) Amen. So it says here in verse 2 of Romans 8, For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Here he's not talking about rules and regulations referring to the Old Testament. He's talking about governing law and principle. Governing rules and principle. Amen? There is a law of death. Sin and death. It's a law. How does that law work? Well, God told Adam about this law from the very outset. He said, Adam, in the day that you sin." transgress my one commandment, don't eat of this fruit of this particular tree. In the day that you eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. Notice disobedience to that one instruction constituted sin and it produced something. The result was automatic. Nothing had to happen other than pulling that lever, flipping that switch. That that action produced a predictable result. That when Adam disobeyed God, he committed sin, and that sin produced death. And that law is still working today. You understand that? The Bible says that all have sinned and fall, not have fallen. All have sinned and fall. That's present tense. Fall short of the glory of God. Amen. Amen. And there in Romans 6, verse 23, it says, The wages of sin is death. Amen? Amen? So the action sin produces a predictable result, death, every time. Every time. It's a law. Amen? And since every human being on the planet has sinned, all have triggered, triggered that result, which is death. Spiritual death, first and foremost. What is spiritual death? It doesn't mean cease to exist. It means to take on the fallen evil nature of the devil and to be forcibly separated from God. If you're spiritually dead, you have no approach to God. You have no standing with God. Amen? You don't have the life of God in you. You're fallen. Amen? And of course, Jesus fixed that. That's the whole message of the good news. Hallelujah. The wages of sin was death. Since we've all sinned, we all have to, that death kicked in and it has to be paid for. Amen. Two ways to pay for it. Pay for it yourself. All right. Problem with that is, is you'll never get done paying it. It's an eternal bill. Option two, find someone who's never sinned who'd be willing to take your place. Yes. Oh, praise God. Is there anyone that fits that bill? Does Muhammad fit that bill? Did Buddha fit that bill? Does any other religious leader fit that bill or even claim to? No. Only the man from Nazareth, born of a virgin, escaping the seed of sin passed on through Adam, born of a virgin, was fully God, lived perfectly in the eyes of God and the eyes of the law, fulfilled the law, And then went to the cross to pay the price for sin. Amen? So we were all under this law. But thank God there's another law. There's another law. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus had, Paul said, has set me free from the law of sin and death. So thank God there's a higher law, a law that supersedes and can undo the lesser law, the lower law, the baser law of sin and death. (laughs) Amen. And really, to help you, everything in life can be classified as the fruit that fits under life or death. Right? Salvation is produced by the law of the spirit of life kicking in. Zoe is imparted to you at the new birth, the life of God, and now you're born again. 
Amen. Amen. And uh, praise God. So uh, death would be spiritual death, salvation, spiritual life. That fits under the law of life. Well, poverty fits under the law of death. Adam became poor. Now he had to work and toil at the ground to get it to produce for him. You know, some of this is ground we've already covered. You understand that, praise God. Just here to tell you that, see, there's a governing law in the kingdom of God. And uh, doing good works and being a good, acceptable person in your culture, your, your society, isn't going to undo and untangle you from the law of sin and death. Right. Only the law, cooperating with the law of life in Christ Jesus. Notice it's not the law of life, it's the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. It's going to set you free from that law. Right. Amen. So go to Mark 4 now. What is a law? Well, let me say this about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, like any good kingdom, is a kingdom of law and order. It's a kingdom of law and order. Anything goes doesn't work. I mean, that just, you're right, that doesn't go in the United States. That doesn't go in any culture. There's law of some kind and order. All right? So order, the word order speaks of authority and organization. Is there authority in God's kingdom? Yes. Yeah. You know, is there an election day in heaven? No. Everybody gets together and kind of votes whether we're going to keep God as God for another term? No. 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 You know, heaven's not a democracy. Right. It's a theocracy. People have taken... American democratic principles and thinks, hey, that'd be a good model to govern the church. I've never met a pastor yet that said, oh, thank God for my deacon board. <laughs> I'm talking one that runs everything. Right. Now, I've got deacons. There, I, I trust you guys aren't offended. <laughs> Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. No, there's no voting, is there? There is authority, yes. and then there's organization. Yes. We have a leader. That there is the head of the church. His name's Jesus. Right. And then there's authority that he's established in the church. Yes. There's authority he's established in the family. Amen. So, so forth and so on. So law, order. Well, law speaks uh, of governing principles. How are we going to operate? How's this thing work? What's good? What's bad? Mm -hmm. Amen? So order speaks of authority and organization. Law speaks of governing principles. Or how does the kingdom operate? How does the kingdom work? Mm -hmm. You understand that? So just like there are physical laws that govern the natural world, there are spiritual laws that govern the spiritual world. And we've made great advances as human beings, haven't we? God's shedding light on the laws that He set in place to govern this natural world. You know, way back in the mid-1700s, you know, Benjamin Franklin got to playing around with electricity. Sent that key up there on the line. What are they doing? You know, they see that power manifested up there. Couldn't, can we harness that? What are the rules that govern it? And men spent many years... All the way up to Thomas Edison, where they figured out how to generate a form of that electrical power and conduct it, right, safely. Get that into a light bulb and look at it. We're all been, being blessed by it today. Yeah. Amen. All being blessed by the heaters today. Yeah. Praise God. All that working. Yeah. Amen. Well, men had to discover the laws that governed it and learned how to cooperate it. You know, and uh, you could see the laws that govern electricity must be respected. That's right. I've come in contact mm -hmm. and vi in violating contact <laughs> with the laws of electricity in my day. I don't have time to go back and tell you those funny stories, but, you know, I got a hold of a 220 one time. I was laying prostrate on a roof, got my thumb in a light fixture that was 220 and uh, being stupid. And... Uh, that, that power just stood me straight up on my feet. Instantly. I'm on my feet. It wasn't the Spirit of God. It was electrical power. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So see, we, the law can bless or the law can hurt. Right. Are you with me? 
So praise God. Now, very quickly, what is a law? A law is something that when acted upon produces a predictable result. How reliable and predictable would it be, do you think? How many of us would, if we lined up, how many of us, and we stuck our finger in the outlet over there, how many of us would get shocked? <laughs> well, just the, just the white folks. No, right? No, because it's a law. Right? Does it matter uh, how you're feeling that day? What your emotion might be? Right? That it spares the depressed, but zaps the joyous. No. A certain action produces a predictable outcome. That is a law. Amen? Amen. Law means governing rules and principles. You know, like the law of gravity. Got that there? Praise God. The law of gravity. A law is going to work the same. It doesn't matter who works it. The law of gravity, I got a little duct tape ball here, praise God, and a wiffle ball. Uh, the law of gravity says if I throw this up, it's going to come down. Isn't that right? How many times? Maybe we ought to take notes and do an experiment. How many times out of 10 we could throw this up and the ball comes down? Right? Anything, you know, an action that produces a predictable result every single time is a law. It's not a theory. It's a law. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Marilyn, why don't you stand up here? Let's see if the law of gravity works for black folks. <laughs> Maybe it won't. You know, those who are with prettier skin than me. Let's see if that, can you catch it, you think? Yeah. Okay, I don't want you to praise the Lord. Throw that thing up there. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so it worked for you. Amen. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wonder if the law of gravity works for Indians. My goodness, we're going to have fun with this, I can tell. No, no, I want you to work the law. Throw it up, and it, it comes down. Isn't that right? Who wants to represent the older generation in here? Anybody? Tony's just scooting down in his chair. Sue wants to do it? Yeah. No, you understand. Y'all know how to work this law? Up, down. Praise the Lord. Okay. I want to see if it works for you. Up, down. All right. So it works for those a little older anyway. Praise God. How about the younger generation? Will it work for you? Up, down, up, down. I wonder, we could, we could play with this for a little while. Is it going to work for the women and the men? Yes. The young and the old? Yes. The white and the black, the Caucasian, the brown, everybody in between. You throw it up, it comes down, it is a law. Yes. Praise God. Well, then you understand what a law is then. Well, let's look at uh, this uh, law of the kingdom. Mark 4, verse number 26. Verse number 26, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. Notice he's applying this truth to the entire kingdom. The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow he himself does not know how. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. Amen. Amen. So he is outlining a governing law or principle of the kingdom of God. How did the kingdom of God even get started? God sowed a seed. Jesus, in talking about His death, said, If a grain of wheat does not fall into the earth and die, it abides alone. He's calling Himself a seed. That His death was him being buried or planted in the ground. Mm -hmm. And then when God raised him up, Paul said Jesus had become the first fruits of them that slept. 
Hallelujah. So God cast His best seed into the ground. (laughs) It germinated in the earth for three days and nights. While Jesus was suffering and paying the price, doing a lot of very other, very important, interesting things. But then, on Easter morning, God raised Jesus from the dead. And He became the firstborn among many brethren. If there's a firstborn, a firstborn, there must be a secondborn and a thirdborn and a fourthborn and a fifthborn. And I don't know, we're up into the multiple billions now, praise God, over time. Glory to God. God sowed a seed, expecting a harvest. And He got one. I said He got one. Glory to God. And he, he calls human beings, He calls the world a field. He calls evil men and women tares. And He calls righteous men and women wheat. And that we're all growing together. Evil's growing. But the kingdom of the good, the good folks, we're growing. Our kingdom's getting bigger too. Praise God. More and more of us every day. And that there's going to come a time where God is going to send His angels down here and separate and bundle up the tares like they did in natural fields and burn them and take His harvest into His silo, if you will. So do you see, He talks about this whole principle as a governing principle of the kingdom. That's how the kingdom works. If you want something more than what is in your life, you've got to sow a seed. The whole kingdom works this way. Genesis 8.22, after the flood, God is restoring. He's going to start over with Noah. He makes Noah a promise saying that he's not going to uh, destroy the earth with water anymore. And he said, as long as the earth remains, as long as the earth remains, seed, time, and harvest shall not cease. Amen. Amen. Doesn't matter what the environmentalists say is happening to the planet. You know, I'm really, really wondering about this whole global warming. We got sleet coming down and average temperature this time of year is 60 degrees. As long as the earth remains, people are going to be sowing seed. Time's going to go by. The earth is going to sprout it. It's going to grow and it's going to reap a harvest. (laughs) Amen. So Mark, 20, uh, Mark 4, 26 through 29 outlines the basic governing principle of the kingdom. And that is a very simple process. Number one, seed is sown into the ground. Mm-hmm. Amen. Number two, the seed instantly becomes ready to harvest. Is that right? No. Number two, the seed germinates, sprouts, and grows progressively. Then number three, the seed comes to maturity and the harvest is reaped. You understand that? If Jesus said about in Mark chapter four, he said the sower sows the word. The Bible says that we are born again of incorruptible seed by the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So the word is a seed. I'm sowing seed into your heart right now. In Mark 4, Jesus talked about different quality types of soil that the Word is sown into. Depending on the type of soil, it's going to be the type of harvest that comes back, if there is a harvest. Amen. So whether it's talking about the Word or sowing seed, the Bible talks about how uh, reaping harvests of souls, Mm -hmm. that the reapers will overtake the sowers in the last day. That God is waiting. Why hasn't Jesus come back? He's not satisfied with the size of the harvest yet, according to, according to James. He said that the husbandman waits patiently for the precious fruit of the earth to be harvested. You see how this seed principle applies to everything in the Spirit. But, oh my goodness, look at time. Are y'all okay today? Praise God, okay. <laughs> y'all in a hurry? Uh, I'm going to get this out as fast as I can here. Well, does this seed principle apply to our prosperity? It absolutely does. I want to give you some references to show you this principle at work as it relates to giving money and reaping money. Giving material things and reaping material things. Amen. Uh, We won't turn to all of them, okay? Uh, But we will turn to some of them. 
Uh, Luke 6.38, uh, we're right here, we're only a few pages away from that. Luke 6.38, Jesus is talking. And you can see the, the seed principle at work in his Sermon on the Mount. When he says, uh, in verse 36, he says, be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Then he says, verse 37, judge not, and you will not be judged. So if I sow not judging, I'm going to reap not being judged. It says, condemn not, and you will not be condemned. Listen, when you condemn somebody, you know, you look at another believer's failure and you rail on them, you spread that, talk about that. Listen, there's all kinds of failures among preachers and all kinds of things. We ought to not be boasting about the body of Christ's failures on Facebook. Glorying in another man's failure or weakness. Love covers a multitude of sins. Ought to have an, the world's got enough sense to do what it can to make itself look good and to protect his own. We throw our best people under the bus. Amen. God's not impressed with our self righteousness. He says, if you won't condemn, what's going to happen to you? You won't be condemned. So then it says, forgive and you will be forgiven. Do you see? He's assigning seed power, the seed principle to forgiveness. If I sow forgiveness to them that need it, then when I need to be forgiven, I'm going to have a harvest to reap of forgiveness. It's a governing law in the, right in the kingdom. But what if I withhold forgiveness and refuse to forgive? That's a seed too. What if I do judge? What if I do walk around and condemn? I'm sowing seed. Mm -hmm. Amen. I heard this one time. It's so good. I just repeat it to you. And that is when anything happens to you negative, someone treats you wrong, something like that. Ask yourself, are they sowing or am I reaping? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because sometimes the bad things that are happening are not them sowing. It's us reaping. We've had people come in here and go, well, you know, I've been in this church so long and nobody, you know, you know whatever about being friendly. I think we're pretty friendly. I just read a survey from some Facebook know-it-all that thinks that, you know, that what's running off visitors is a church being too friendly. I'm having trouble with that. Sorry. <laughs> But listen, praise God, if we're wanting for friends, the Bible tells us a problem, that he who would have friends must show himself friendly. Amen. Why are you waiting and say, well, I'm going to wait till you sow friendship into my life before I sow friendship into your life. The kingdom doesn't work like that way. Show yourself a friend and you'll have plenty. So do you see the pattern here though? Now notice what Jesus says in verse 38. He says, give. And it will be measured back to you or given back to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Now listen, um, a lot of people, you know, a lot of the teaching is coming obviously from the pulpit. This is where we gather together in church. But don't just think I'm talking about giving to the church. Amen. It's not. Amen. I give to my wife. Amen. I sow into my wife. Honey, go buy yourself a new dress. Let me take you out. Amen. She sows into my life. Amen. I'm, when I buy clothes for my children, you could think of it as a duty. Or you could think of it as a gift. I'm giving to my children. Amen. My folks came in town. We took them out to a really nice restaurant. Racked up, I think, the biggest bill we've had for five or six people. Wow, we looked at that bill. We had a little gift card with us. And Amber said as she was going off to, to the powder room, she said, uh, now you be sure to get that gift card back because we ought to have some left. We, need to, we had to add on top of it. Praise the <laughs> Lord. Amen. Amen. But, uh, you know, I just view that as seed. I buy meals for people. And do I get something? Somewhere along the line? 
Praise God. Amen. And again, a time's going to get away from us here, but you know, Genesis reveals to us that all seeds reproduce after their own kind. That's a law. That's a law in the natural. Nobody goes out here sowing corn expecting to get soybean. Nobody sows oranges and gets apples. Nobody. God set it up that way. And in Genesis 1.11, it said the seed is in itself. The way to get more, the way God set this up, the way to get more of any one thing, God has put that supernatural ability in the thing itself. In the orange are many orange trees that if planted and nurtured and taken care of would produce many, many, many orchards. You can count the number of seeds in an apple, but you can't count the number of apples in a seed. That's right. Did you get that? This is an exciting principle. God set the whole order in the natural world and in the spiritual world. God wanted many sons. God wanted more sons. What did He do? He said, more sons is in my son. The seed is in itself. I sow my son, I'm going to get many sons. That's how the thing works. When you sow love, more love is in that seed of love. When you sow forgiveness, more forgi- forgiveness in multiplied form is in that singular seed of forgiveness. Amen. Don't you love the wisdom of God and how He set this thing up? Yes. He says, give and it will be given to you. And I'm going to summarize the way you measure it out. Right. You know how this works, right? Yeah. If you sow a little bit of seed, you'll get a harvest proportionate to that. But if you sow a whole lot of seed, you'll get a harvest in proportion of that. Amen. Amen. Now go to Galatians with me, chapter 6. And I want to nail this down very quickly so that you can see that God has assigned seed power to money. Amen. Not, just to, not just to grain, not just to uh, peas or okra or other kind of seeds. God has assigned seed power to money. This is exciting. Praise God. (laughs) It's funny how this thing works. It works. I didn't even think about this. But, you know, I I got a a man a birthday. I'll just be general because he's here. I I thought, what could I get this brother for his birthday? And so he likes outdoor stuff. I got him a knife. I bought him a knife. I bought him a knife on Friday. Well, I came into church this morning and I got a little gift package on my, uh, right? Someone totally unrelated, no one saw me give a knife. And now I got a knife on my desk this morning. Isn't that funny how that works? I sowed a knife. I got a knife. Every seed reproduces after its own kind. So, could you, if you sowed a suit... What could you expect? Shoes? No, every seed reproduces after its own kind. Amen. Amen. People walk around and go, man, somebody bought that guy a suit. Right? Mm -hmm. Nobody ever bought me a suit. (laughs) Have you ever sown a suit? Right. Amen. Praise God. One thing I like to do is sow ties. Well, then I get ties. Amen. Every seed reproduces after its own kind. That's right. Amen. Praise God. All right, Galatians 6, verse 6 is, Let him who is taught, Pastor Ruby shared this with us, Let him who is taught the Word, that's you, share in all good things with him who teaches, that's me in this case, do not be deceived, God is not mocked, and here's that famous verse, right? For whatever a man sows, that will he also reap. And people talk about that. You know, and, I, and actually, another Facebook Christian survey said I shouldn't use that phrase either. People don't want to hear that they're going to reap what they sow. Well, sorry for them. Better to know the law and how it works. <laughs> right? Amen. So, but he, and of course, that's true generally, because we know it's a governing principle. But in context, what's he talking about here? 
He's talking about money. Contributing to the financial support of the minister. And he says, so reap. And then he says in verse 9, and don't grow weary while doing good. For in due season you shall reap. Listen, there is no reaping where there wasn't any sowing. And so I'm sowing to you spiritual things. Amen. And I, get, I live from the gospel. That's, what, that's biblical. I live from the gospel. I get a salary. You all contribute to that. So we have a wonderful exchange going on here. Everybody wins. But it's seed. It's seed. Do you get that? When you, when you are giving your offering, do you just wave it goodbye? The farmer doesn't sow sorrowfully. He sows expectantly, joyfully, full of hope, knowing this isn't the end. This isn't the end. Some of you hadn't got a chip, but you'll get it. Praise God. That's not the end. Glory to God. Other scriptures uh, uh, reveal this principle. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6-8. through 8. We're not going to go there. But Paul is uh, working with the church of Corinth who had it in their heart to sow a large financial seed out of the church uh, to the Christians in Jerusalem who were being persecuted and having a hard time. And so he said, if you sow bountifully, you reap bountifully. If you sow sparingly, you reap sparingly, right? He said that God is able to multiply your seed sown. He called it seed. And they're talking about an offering, a financial material offering. And there Paul is talking about sow sparingly, reap sparingly. Sow bountifully, reap. Sow, reap, multiplication, all of that going in to the giving of an offering. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, I think we'll just end today in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Praise God. Amen. If you want, this is, now remember, you understand this is one aspect of prosperity. This is one way to increase. You understand that? But listen, I am not teaching give to get. Amen. That's right. I'm not teaching that. Amen. I taught you before I got here, I taught Matthew 6, 33. Amen. Seek first our King, His kingdom, and His righteousness, His ways of doing and being right. I have taught you uh, that you have an inheritance because you're His child. Amen. Right? That's one way. That's, I live out of my inheritance. I really skipped a step here and assumed that you're honoring God in tithing. Mm-hmm. Because tithing is not sowing. Right. Tithing is returning. Amen. You can't sow what's not yours. Right. You're not sowing until you pierce the 10% threshold. That's right. You understand that? So I'm understanding, you know, I am teaching one legitimate aspect of of how to increase. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 says, verse 1, cast your bread upon the waters and wave goodbye. Take a picture. No. It says, for you will find it after many days giving a serving to seven and also to eight. For you do not know what evil will be on the earth. Now what's he talking about? The phrase, cast your bread upon the waters, refers to an ancient practice of people who lived upon marshes, wetlands, and riverbanks. And when the riverbanks would overflow into the rich soil of the banks of, say, the Nile River, While those waters were overflowed, they would float out there and they would cast their seed upon that water. Mm -hmm. Knowing that when the season passes, the river waters will recede and now their seed is firmly planted in that rich soil deposited there by the flowing river. Or did you get that? That's what it's talking about. That's what it's talking about. Casting your bread upon the waters. Casting your Corn, your seed of corn is really what it's in the Hebrews, what he's talking about. The waters recede, the seed is in that rich soil, 
Amen? And it says you will find it again after many days. Then he says the the phrase uh, distribute or divide to seven, yes to eight. Seven is the perfect number. He's saying don't just sow once. Sow it every opportunity. Sow in many places. New Living uh, translates it almost in the language of diversify your portfolio. Sow into different fields. It says, and so yes, even to eight. Why? Because you're now in the, you know, seven's the perfect number and you're beyond it. Now you've done more than what's required. Now what about, for you know not what evil come on the earth. We don't know, praise God, we have faith, we trust, but we don't know when we are going to find ourselves in a place of difficulty. And when, and if and when we, our families, find ourselves in a place where we are in need and we are in difficulty, our having sowed seed in a good time will ensure that we will be the recipient of seed when we need it. Praise God. A lot of people neglect and neglect and they don't sow their seed and they're buying Shirts and ties and shopping and what they want and what they want and what they want and they're consuming, but they are not sowing. And then they get into a place of difficulty and they're wanting to reap harvest out of fields that they have not sown in. Walk down to Paducah Bank, say, I'd like to get money out of this bank, please. They're going to say, yes, Brother Chris, what is your account number? Oh, I don't have an account number, but you got money and I need money, so I'm here to get money. You have money. That's your business. I need money. So I'm here at your counter to get money. That doesn't work. But you don't have an account with it? Oh, no, I don't have an account with you. You haven't put any money in? You're not getting any money out. You're going to get carted out of there and get a talking to. Praise God. Amen. So uh, we need to sow if we want to reap. Really, the harvest I'm walking in today is off seed sown in yesterday. And the reason I'm sowing and enjoy and think it a good thing, praise God, to sow today, is because of the promise of a future harvest tomorrow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Then in verse 3, it says, If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves upon the earth. And if a tree falls to the south or the north, in the place where the tree falls, there it shall lie. What's he talking about? He's talking about certainty. He opened up verse 1 saying, Cast your bread upon the waters, do it often so much. Many different areas. Mm -hmm. Then he goes to talking about clouds and trees falling. When a tree falls in the woods and it falls, starts falling towards the north, it lands right there towards the north, where's it going to lie? It's going to lie right there. A tree doesn't start falling to the north and then do a 180 and go over here and lay to the south. It doesn't work like that. How often could you, you know, if you sat there and calculated trees falling, okay, I'm going to watch 10 trees fall to the north. Let's see, how many of those trees are going to fall and lay to the north? Every single last one of them. It's a law. How many times is the cloud going to fill up? You know, clouds don't hoard. You understand that? You can't, you can't be. God said, be like the cloud. Don't hoard. When you get full, be like the cloud. When the cloud gets full, it pours forth. Refreshing and blessing upon the earth. Don't hoard. Be a blessing. Get full and pour out. Bless somebody. Take care of somebody. Have you ever, have you had the satisfaction recently of paying a widow's rent? Or being led by the Spirit to go to someone and give them something and they start crying saying, you have no idea. But I had this and I was talking to God about that. And here you are. You heard from God. That's, whoo, that's, that's, it gets fun right there. You heard from God. Being some, being used of God to be someone's answer. Amen. Amen. 
So here he's talking in verse 4 about certainty, certainty, certainty. Amen? When you sow, do you have to wonder? Is it a matter of hope, wishing? Are we playing the spiritual lottery? We are working a wall. We throw the ball up, the ball comes down. We have it in our heart to sow and bless, and it is coming back. (laughs) It is coming back. It is coming back. And it's not coming back the way I put it out. It's coming back in multiplied form. Multiplied form. Now in closing, he says in verse 4, a very important truth. He who observes the wind will not sow. And he who regards the clouds will not reap. What's this talking about? Excuses. People get caught up watching the wind and the clouds. Right? One translation of this verse says, those who wait for perfect conditions will never get anything done. We never got this building done waiting for perfect conditions. The natural, financial, economic, construction, political, church, attendance, report, climate got worse, not better, as we built this building. Amen? It's not, you don't, you get out there and start looking at the wind. What's that mean? Well, I want to sow, but let me see. I got this coming up. Oh, I got that coming up. Oh, I got this. And I got plans for that money over there. And you get to looking at wind. And you don't sow. Then when it comes harvest time, praise God, He says you're looking at clouds. Looking at clouds, is it a good time? Is it a good time? And you never get out there and reap. You never get out there and use your faith. And lay hold on the harvest. Excuses. So I've endeavored just to highlight to you this morning a law. A law of harvest. A law of sowing. A law of reaping. Amen. And we work it to our pleasing. We just work it because we decide to. Is the outcome questionable? Is it? Did I teach you enough in this amount of time to let you? Is is it a question? No, No, it's it's, right? It's not it's not question. You know, the farmer's not laying at bed at night wringing his hands. He doesn't know how that seed springs up out of there. He doesn't know what makes that grow. But he knows how to work that system. Doesn't he? Amen. Now, I didn't, I'm not, there's no plan here, but I, I do have, I'm going to give you an opportunity to sow today. If you want to. Again, please, no pressure, okay? Um, And we'll close with this. I want to just uh, shift over and just explain something to you here. Um, You know, we have a bond payment. We're paying down, you know, our building loan. Big chunks all the time. Paying it down every month. And uh, I've endeavored. We had such a long, stretching, pioneering season getting to where we could move in that I've really just had in my heart, I don't want to put things on people. I want to just believe God and the money that comes in will operate on that money that comes in. Amen. And we know our bond payment uh, leveled out, get ramped up, got bigger, bigger, bigger for the first four years. And that's over, that's done with, it's leveled out now. But the last ramp up payment was the largest ramp up of the term. It was $2,000 more a month. And that started in June, June, July, August, September, October. Now we're in November. We may have made the payment in November, I don't know. Praise God, already sent it off. November. And uh, praise God, I hadn't been out there, right? Begging, crying, bawling, squalling, none of that. Amen. But I am just going to report to you, it's been tight. And we've been, you know, living on the edge. You know what I mean? Just right there on the edge.